Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com, and welcome to this video on support and resistance. Now, what is support and resistance? Support and resistance is used uh, by traders to identify areas on a price chart where um, there are buying and selling opportunities. So you have um, horizontal support and resistance, you have diagonal support and resistance, uh, which is things like trend lines, and I'll be talking about that in another video, um, and also things like um, uh, moving averages as well. Moving averages are what you would call dynamic support and resistance. And again, I'll be uh, talking about that in a, another video, but we're gonna be focusing on the horizontal support and resistance and how to plot horizontal support and resistance and pretty much why they're used and uh, how to trade them. So again, support and resistance are used by uh, traders to identify areas on a price chart and locations on a price chart where uh, they wanna do business. And this is based on historical price uh, reacting at that um, price as well. So um, if this was a price chart, and what you will have is areas where prices will come up to a level or down, but in this case, uh, up to a level, and then you will have a uh, strong rejection. Uh, so this is going to be price here and you'll have different levels and then um, so this area and these areas would be used as what we would call resistance because price is being resisted here so price is being resisted here price is being resisted here um, and here and then what you would have is things like support. So support would be where price is being supported. So think of um, support as the floor and think of resistance as the ceiling. So <clears throat> based on past price action, so imagine uh, we were looking at this in real time and we hadn't necessarily uh, uh, seen what was coming into the future. So prices would come up Right, and that was real time. When prices gradually make their way up, what traders would assume is that because prices had been rejected here, that the same may happen, or there's a probability or a likelihood that the same thing will happen again um, currently. So they would project that prices come up to this level and then there's a 50 50 60 70 percent chance that prices will do that again in the present so they would look to the past and look to the um go back through the charts and see how prices reacted at that level historically and then try to capitalize from that uh in the present and hopefully price does have the same reaction so the strongest levels of support and resistance so let me just clear all this up so the strongest areas of support and resistance are areas where you can see a lot of buying or a lot of selling coming into the market and historically so um again if prices are moving up and then all of a sudden we have prices move down that becomes an area, or this area becomes an area of interest, right? So this is, okay, well, there was a lot of selling at this point, so uh, let's do it from the buying side, and it would look like this from the buying side. So price may be coming down like this, and then all of a sudden, you get a lot of buying, and prices move up. So that would become, you know, this would be an area of potential support. We have no idea whether this is going to be uh, support. Don't know why I put SP. Uh, let me just take that off. So S U P. This is support. Right, because price is being supported. Now, when price again comes down into this level, we're looking for the same thing to happen, the same reaction to happen 
and again the same thing with resistance all right oh yes so um Again, the strongest areas of support and resistance are where price has been uh, rejected, um, like kind of like hard in and hard out, as I would say. So it comes into a level and then comes out. That's what you want to see. You don't want to see uh, price coming into a level. Let me. Uh, um, you don't really want to see prices coming up into a level where it's like it's like this. You know slowly slowly and then you want to see something like this and something like that on a price chart um, and that is basically evidence of a lot of selling or a lot of buying in the market um, so with support and resistance the second touch of a level is what we would call confirmed support and resistance so um, we don't know that this is resistance, for example. Right? This level is resistance here. We have no idea. Oh. So we have no idea that this is resistance. We know that price has been rejected there, but what are the what is the likelihood that that would be um, that would happen in the future? Now, um, what they were called an aggressive entry. Now, traders who are quite aggressive, because you've got aggressive traders and you've got more conservative traders would look to this zone and then uh, they would use that as a go obviously the area that they would look to maybe sell and depending on whether they've got some other uh, confluences or indications that this is going to be a sell trade then they would um, look to actually sell and hopefully price goes in their direction but we can't call this an area of resistance until price has been resisted because prices could easily just continue going higher so we could be in um, what they call a trend so this could be making uh, a high a higher low and uh, this price could actually just go straight through so until prices have actually reacted from this level and look like they're going down and been rejected then we can actually confirm that this area is a level of resistance <clears throat> and the same thing with support so let me just get rid of that so support would be the same thing we have a rejection now we're on alert at this level to see if price does come back into that level and if price does come back in here and price does react then we have a confirmed level of support um, so it's usually on the second touch and it's always on the second touch that you can say that this is a confirmed level of support because we actually don't know whether prices may continue going through that level so when plotting areas of um, and levels of support and resistance the level should be obvious for you know pretty much everyone to see so what you don't want is um, a level where it is quite ambiguous and uh, and um, not obvious because if it's not obvious then there are not going to be traders at that level traders like um, support and resistance is traded by um, you know the big institutions um, retail traders it's pretty much the foundation of most trading strategies most technical trading strategies so <clears throat> When um, looking for uh, these types of areas as far as support and resistance, what you want to do is you want to trade um, in an area where there's going to be a lot of buying and selling activity. And if it's not obvious that there's going to be a lot of buying and selling at that, um, at that area and you're basing that off of history and historical facts, um, then... That that's an area that you don't really want to be looking at. Look at obvious areas of support and resistance. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the chart next, and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. And we're going to be um I'm going to be showing you how to plot the best levels of uh, support and resistance. 
So um, this is the daily chart on the US dollar Japanese yen pair and um, we can see some interesting areas of support and uh, potential um, well, potential support and resistance. So um, first of all, whenever we're drawing support and resistance on a price chart, what you want to do is draw the areas as zones um, there's a temptation to draw them as lines and you might see them drawn um, as lines um, you know and in other videos um, but just my advice is to more draw them as zones um, and the reason why is because uh, the market is really not perfect as far as um, you know prices uh, when they basically ping off of a level let's say for example uh, here to draw uh, prices as a line um, doesn't do the area justice. You may miss out on um, quite a few trades if, for example, price didn't actually come up. If you're waiting for price to um, reach this exact zone and this exact line and this exact price of 114.381, and prices came up but didn't touch that area because that happens quite a lot um, you may miss out on a trade depending on how you trade whereas if you draw it as an area then um, you have quite a wide um, zone um, with which to look for price to come into and uh, look for a trading opportunity so um, Trading is, is, is a science and it's an art, it's a balance. It's very, sub it can be very subjective or it is very subjective matter of fact um, to you. How I draw and where I draw my support, support and resistance zones uh, may be slightly different to you and it will be different to uh, different traders, but as far as the exact areas, but um, what isn't going to be different is how obvious the level of uh, support and resistance is um, to traders. They are, um, you know, once you know how to plot support and resistance and what you're looking for, then um, it becomes quite uh, easy to, to see. So draw them as a zone. There's no exact correct way to um you know to draw them people do develop different techniques um but as long as you're looking for an area where you want to do business then that is what matters so um what you want to do uh so support and resistance are zones um so what we want to do is identify first an area of rejection and a strong area of rejection so what you want to see is uh let's uh, get a tool and so you can see is you know basically like the hard in hard out movement that's what you want to see to the upside for um, resistance and then you want to see something like this and then something like that to the downside and that would be um, a potential level of um, support and this would be a potential level of resistance so if price does come back up into this level here um, aggressive traders will look to enter on the first touch and then if this does become resistance then that is a confirmed level of resistance this isn't confirmed until price really um, is supported or resisted by price on the second touch so going back to uh, the candlesticks so we identify an area uh, of potential resistance. So in real time, this is what we would have seen. We would have seen that area there um, and we would have, uh, when prices came back up into that area of potential uh, resistance, we do see prices um, you know, react to that level. Now, um, as an added bonus, what you also want to see, um, if you don't necessarily know that this is a, a potential level, well, it's always a potential level of resistance, but you, what you want to do is look to the um, historical side of the chart to see if this level has been traded to give you a bit more confluence in taking this trade. So, um, 
what I mean by that is um, you want to scroll to the left of the chart right and see if this level had been traded and reacted to and this price um, had been reacted to um, a few times in the past and that would give you more confluence um, to maybe trade this on the first touch of this level so what we want to do is probably just extend this level here and look back in the past and see if this level had been used or had been traded as a resistance level in the past you can see that it actually had so you can see prices came up resisted prices came up resisted prices came up again had been resisted a few times again right here uh, when prices came back into this level, we got a reaction here. We got another reaction, a few reactions, and a few, for a few days, prices couldn't break through. Prices eventually broke through the level. Prices come back. It would acted as resistance there. Acted as a bit of resistance here. So, when prices did come up to this level, and then were rejected. Um, because you know in the past that traders had um, seen this level as um, a level of resistance and it had been used as a level of resistance in the past, that will give you more confluence to actually take the first touch of this new level um, or potential new level of resistance. So if you wanted to enter a trade earlier, then that would give you the confluence. Whereas if you had uh, looked to the past and let's say, for example, this level hadn't been used as a level of uh, resistance before, um, then what you would probably want to do is be more conservative in your approach um, and you would probably wait for confirmation of this level um, to be a level of resistance and then you would probably wait for price to come back up into this level here again to this level here again and then because this would be the confirmation of the level because if price hadn't it been used in the past if this hadn't been an area in the past then um, we don't have that historical uh, pattern and what we're looking for is patterns within the market um, that, have, that are basically repeating themselves so if this has been repeated then chances are that this would be a good location to try and get short on the first attempt back up into this level if this price historically had not been um, used in the past but we did see a strong rejection then um, the safest way to trade this level would be to wait for price to come up into this level come back down wait for the reaction the confirmed resistance and then uh, see prices come back up into this level here again and then you would want to look for uh, shorting opportunities trading opportunities to the downside So next uh, we have, uh, let me just get rid of uh, some of this stuff here. Right, so next we have, um, the more a zone is touched, the weaker it becomes, right? <coughs> so with support and resistance, uh, the more a zone is touched, the weaker it becomes. Um, there is a tendency for traders to believe that the more a level is touched, the stronger it becomes. But if you were to think about this uh, logically, right? If a level was to become stronger as it was touched, so let's say for example, prices came up, prices came down, right? We got a level, levels of support and resistance. If each time a level is touched it gets stronger and stronger potentially then we would be in a ranging market forever the market would pretty much stay between a high and a low 
And as we know, that is not the case. You know, markets move in uh, trends, they move sideways. And um, think about um, really support and resistance as a uh, pebble being skimmed across a pond. So the first touch, if you can skim, if you don't know what skimming is, maybe, you know, Google it. But, um, you know, you throw a pebble um, on you know, in a, in a river or a stream or a pond or something like that. And what happens is, is the, the, the pebble, say this is, for example, this is the water, right? And the first touch is usually the strongest touch. The second touch is, is going to be a bit less and a bit less and a bit less. And then it breaks through uh, the surface of the water. So think about support and resistance, um, in the same way so the more a level is touched is the weaker it becomes that does not mean that this level will not you know will, will definitely break through right it you know the market can you know have several touches and bounces you know five up to five six seven ten touches if it wants to but just as a general rule of thumb um, what you want to um, assume is that the more touches a support or resistance level has um, is the weaker it becomes it's not as strong as the previous touches so let's go back to um, go back to the chart right so um, just as a rule of thumb assume that that is uh, the case because we can see for example uh, let's get rid of remove right so we can see this level of support here we have one two and then prices actually break through now um, we would look at this zone and we would say okay well is this could we have traded it here the first time? So if we trade, if we saw this move in real time and we saw prices, you know, come up here, come down here, sorry, and then move up, you know, and make this bullish move here, could we have traded this the first time round? So then we look to the chart historically and see if prices had been uh, used as support in the past. So we can see prices were supported here we can also see that prices had been support here here and it pretty much you know broken through but then it did come back and again this would be more of a zone so um if we were looking at that area there remember um support and resistance is more of a um a, a science and uh, an art so again it had been used as support in the past this area here so again we can see that prices came into this zone so we could have actually traded this um, and been an aggressive trader and look to get in on the first touch so we know that this level had been traded in the past as support so once when, when prices came back down into this we can trade this on the first touch um, but going back to prices uh, becoming weaker the um, the more that they touch um, is that's 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 what you pretty much want to, um, want to assume so we'll go through some examples um, so here we go this was the past previous example so we have you know prices touched here first time second time and the third time prices reacted did we see was this level touched um, in the past has it been a level that had been touched in the past um, no oh, well slightly and that was back in 2008 it wasn't necessarily a level that had been touched um, recently in the past so um, this one you may have wanted to wait for some sort of confirmation before 
getting in and as you can see prices did hold the third time of round um, so again just take it as a rule of thumb you can go back through your charts as well and uh, see how many times on average um, you know support and resistance does hold now what we also have with support and resistance is um, when support becomes resistance and resistance becomes support so when price breaks I think that's it right so when price um, when a support level does not hold or when a resistance level does not hold then the underside of a support level would become resistance and the above side of resistance would become support so let me just so let me show you what I mean uh, sorry my brush tool here we go so let's say we have a level of support price has been rejected price has been rejected and then we have a third touch and then prices go through right so on the second touch we would draw a level of support once prices break through support or if they do um, the underside of what we would call the support level um, traders now trade this as resistance and this is known as market structure so the structure of the market um, has changed support has now turned to resistance and it's the same thing with resistance becoming support. So we would have resistance, 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 prices might do something like that. We would have a level that traders would trade off of, prices break through. Now traders would trade this level to the upside. So when we're talking about, and when you hear market structure, the structure of the market, it's that support becomes resistance and resistance um, becomes support. And again, we're just dealing with probabilities. This is not um, exact. Um, you know, you don't think that, you know, prices now must become, uh, you know, uh, resistance once it's broken. It's just there's a likelihood that once prices break a support level there's a strong chance um, or usually a, a high probability chance that to, uh, broken support will become resistance and um, broken resistance will become support so let's go back to the charts <clears throat> and we can see an example of this on um, something we had drawn earlier so we've got this level of support support and then prices break through what do we see prices come up into this zone here and then we have a rejection um let's see if we can see a few more right so this is this is a nice one right so we have prices in this identified level of previous support now prices come back up into this level and it becomes resistance and if we extend the line the zone further we had resistance here and if we extend this to here prices broke through now resistance becomes support 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 prices broke through resistance we can see that prices broke through again resistance resistance and uh, this is pretty much what happens with the structure of the market so um, again we've got a level here where we've got a resistance level here we've got 
unconfirmed resistance. We don't know what happened to the left, so we might want to confirm that level if we were looking to trade this aggressively. So um, if we were looking to trade it aggressively, let's have a quick look to see what had happened in the past and if there was any, uh, there was a decent level. Uh, well, there was a level, it had pretty much been 2007 since prices had, you know, uh, <laughs> come back up here, but it was, I guess, a level that traders had looked to in the past. So you would make up your mind to say whether that is a valid level if that was too far in the past. But again, we're looking for patterns. So um, it is a historical level. Uh, this was what, 2014, so pretty much seven years later, seven, uh, six years later, we had uh, prices come up here and uh, whether you wanted to trade that um, or not. But we're talking about sort of, uh, resistance becoming support, support becoming resistance. So we had a level uh, that had been broken through and then we see prices come back and act as a bit of support prices broke through came back through again broke through and then prices were used as resistance again at that level prices came back up into this level again that is a level of resistance prices broke through support 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 broke through um and we had um, pretty much um, support becoming resistance and resistance becoming support. So just to recap, um, support areas, support and resistance areas are zones on a price chart. Um, again, it's, um, I keep repeating this, but it's um, a science and an art. It's very subjective to you, but what's not subjective is, um, you know, areas where you have this hard in and hard out movement. So, uh, you know, price is being rejected um, quite severely and quite sharply. That's not um, objective. So you're looking for um, those types of areas um, to be on alert when you're looking for areas of support and resistance. Draw them as zones. Um, look to uh, the past to see if that level had been used historically um, as support and resistance. Remember that support becomes resistance and resistance becomes support. So if it is an area in the past that has been used as support and resistance, um, you may want to um, be a bit aggressive in your entry and not necessarily wait for price to be confirmed once uh, price comes up into a level of support or resistance or potential support or resistance. So um, again, just looking for obvious areas on a price chart. Don't look for, um, you know, the every little tiny level of, of possible support and resistance if it's not clear and you're you know you're struggling to you know search for a level then it probably isn't a level of support and resistance you're not going to capture every support and resistance level at first this is a skill you have to kind of get your eye in to um you know drawing support and resistance there are going to be opportunities that you're going to miss you know once um prices come up into a level that get rejected you're going to think to yourself oh i should have seen that and it's hindsight don't worry we all go through that um the more you draw support and resistance zones on your chart is the better you'll become at uh, you know, spotting the best levels of support and resistance. So I hope that helps. Um, my name is Leon Rowe. And if you have any questions, just email me at uh, support or info at trading180.com.